draw a box around the entire system. So if we look at um, this system, it's a four kilogram box. And there's a six kilogram box. And they're connected via a rope. Remember this ropes, ropes are like these magical things that allow us to basically have an action reaction pair between two objects. I'll call this um, object A and object B. Now I'm not going to draw any forces on this diagram because it's a schematic. Uh, we should try and distinguish schematics from free body diagrams as per my public service announcement earlier this week. So to just be like as gruesome as possible, I'm going to draw two separate free body diagrams, one for body A and one for body B. So these guys have um, their own weight forces acting on them, of course. There's a normal force. There's also a tension force. Now it's tempting to, to write that tension force as T in both cases, but really, because um, I'm a stickler for the notation, um, I shouldn't really write those two forces as the same symbol because they're pointing in the opposite direction. Yes, they have an equal magnitude, uh, which we'll acknowledge with some, some notation. So they've got the same magnitude, but of course they're pointing in the opposite direction. So I really should uh, distinguish between those two vectors. And there's one more force in the problem, which is the force uh, which the person's pulling on object B with. Now, the question in part A asks us to find the acceleration of crate A. The acceleration of crate A is equal to the acceleration of crate B. That's the first key insight. Why do these accelerations have to be equal? And perhaps an easy way to art score answer that question is to consider what would happen if those accelerations weren't equal. Someone chime in and tell me. Exactly. That's exactly right. Thank you, Brody. Um, if, excel if A is accelerating more than B, it's going to crash into B. If A is accelerating less than B, the rope will stretch. We're not um, considering that because we're not told that's the case. We're told that the string is taut. And you can imagine that is definitely the, what would happen if you started pulling this adiabatically. So that means that both these things have the same acceleration, which we're just going to call A. Again, I don't want to confuse my forces with my acceleration, so I'm going to draw it with a different color. They're both accelerating that way. That's the vector. It's got a magnitude of A. Just chime in if you want to interrupt at any point and ask questions. So I'll do it the short way, because that's the fun way. And that's to consider the whole thing as a black box. So imagine that um, this person didn't know what was inside this kind of magical shroud that I'm now placing over the boxes, but they knew that they were pulling on something with a force F. So the, the, the total mass is equal to MA plus MB. That's equal to 10 kilograms. The force they're pulling with has a magnitude which we're trying to um, find out. We can already figure it out. It's going to equal um, that mass times the common acceleration, which is 29 newtons. Pretty easy. And now we've got to figure out the tension. Well, again, we can use um, Newton's second law and the free body diagram for box A to say that the sum of the forces acting on box A have to equal the mass of A times the acceleration. This is uh, really simple because the vertical components cancel, the box isn't accelerating up or down. We just have the tension force, which is the only horizontal force acting on A, equal to the mass of A times this acceleration. We can just take the x component of this equation because it's a purely x-oriented set of vectors. And that means that T is equal to MA times A. We know everything about the right-hand side. It's 4 kilograms times 2.9 meters per second squared. So that is um, 8 plus 3.6, that is 11.6 newtons. So that means we can easily see that the tension in the string is way less than the amount that the person's um, pulling on the box with. 
How could we have hand waved this? I don't know if you've seen my video about Feynman's glory, which is his idea that wouldn't it be great if we could intuit this kind of result, at least wave our hands and, and get some prediction or retrodiction on it. I think we can use uh, intuition to drive for Feynman's glory here. We know that that force is pulling both boxes. We know that tension is only pulling one of the boxes. So it should be a no brainer from intuition that the tension is less than the applied force. But we can also get some scale as well. We can get some idea about how big this force is. Because that tension force is only pulling 40% of the box, the overall box weight, we should have that this is equal to 40% uh, of 29 newtons. I haven't done that calculation, but I'm pretty sure it's correct. If anyone wants to um, check, that would be awesome. All right, any questions about that? This is just one way to solve this problem. There are others. Uh, I wanted to provide a slightly different flavor to those people that saw me do it in the workshop on Tuesday. No questions, comments, critique of the AV? All right, I'm going to switch over to my um, tablet so we can solve question 10 together.